You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane and the Top 10 Gardener Podcast. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are neighbors talking about? And if the flowers are blooming in, in your neighbor's yard, it's going to be blooming throughout the neighborhood. And so I think there's some value in sharing that back and forth. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Thank you. Any interesting questions? Like, oh my gosh, this is, we've been waiting for this one <laughs> for a month. Hmm. No? I haven't seen anything outside the norm oh. lately. Or, you know. It's May. <clears throat> Everything's gardening. Everything's animals, how to water. Well, there's bugs, bugs, bugs. <laughs> Our first question is how to water. Of course. <laughs> so Don is in Prescott. He has a peach tree that he's had in the ground over a year. Okay. So he was in talking. Um, he's been watering three times a week. Okay. He said, no, only water one time a week. Right. Because, so his question is, is that right? Yeah. It's, listen, <laughs> was he here or was he at the competitors? So <laughs> if he's here, he here. So we have a, a water guide. So, so. Anyone that's got a business card has a water has a water guide on the back of their card. In the back of that card, it says, for plants that are, are established, they've been rooting for over two years, had two seasons to actually flush their roots into the surrounding soil, that a, a deep soak once a week is optimal. Uh, even when it's 90, we haven't even seen, it hasn't even been hot no, yet, but even in the summer when it's hot, <clears throat> once a week, a deep soak. So you're pushing that water to the entire root zone, and then a little bit farther. So that it's reaching, it's it's going deeper for those roots. This is especially important for you folks out in that heavy clay area. So the Dewey, Humboldt, the uh, uh, Prescott Valley, uh, Paulden, you guys have heavy clay soil. And it takes a while for that. If you're watering the whole soil band, the whole whole root zone, it's going to take a while for that water to evaporate, to dry out. The top can look dry, right. but then you you go down an inch, even a half inch, and it's very moist. You can kill a peach tree. Pitted fruits, plums, peaches, apricots, nectarines, uh, they all like moist, but then they, they need to breathe. So if you're going to kill those varieties of plants, it'll be from overwatering. That's frequency. They, you, they, they never got a chance to dry out. So it's critical. I'd say no more, at least for the love of gardening, for the love of peach trees. Water only twice a week would be enough. Three is, is far too. That's every other day. It's going to drown. Yeah. It's not going to perform well. It's going to drop or shed its, its, its fruits mm -hmm. as it gets too wet. And so I'd say, yeah, too much. I think you were fed a, a good line from the professionals <laughs> at the garden center. Okay. So remember that. All right. Next question is from Alan in Prescott. Uh, he has, <clears throat> excuse me, a large clump of aspen trees. Yeah. That one of the trunks of the aspen trees did not put out leaves, but it's sitting up lots of shoots from the bottom. Okay. So he wants to know, is that aspen tree probably dead? And should, what should you do with the shoots? Will they do anything? So and this is very common for aspens. This is how they grow wild out in the forest. It's kind of, you'll just see some dead ones every once in a while. It's pretty common. Now, don't give up hope. Alan, don't go digging, cutting that thing down yet. <laughs> test it first. And the way you test a branch to see if it is alive or dead, you take your thumbnail or a pocket knife or something, scrape the bark off. If the bark, if the wood underneath that bark is green, that is alive, it will come out. It just got zapped by frost. Something happened where it was that one was stressed out and the others didn't. So it's 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 crying about it. So it's late to leaf out. If it's brown underneath the bark or white, brown or white, that particular area or that branch is dead. And so if it's brown all the way down to the base, you have to cut that off. And now that will free up your suckers, what we call them, the, the wild shoots coming up from the roots. They will just ignite with new growth. And by the end of the season, you'll never know that one of the branches kind of died back. But pretty common. We hear this pretty often, yeah. even with our own 
I don't know why that happens. If, a, if an aspen tree gets stressed out at all, if it's a little bit cold in the winter, it loses a branch. When it's a little, I mean, gophers, who knows? Grubs could have gotten in there. Something happened where that branch got stressed and died over the winter and it's not coming back. But luckily, aspens are hard to kill because they come up, they come right back from the from the roots and start taking off, fertilize it, give it some 744 all-purpose plant food, and they will, you'll get six feet of growth off that sucker. I mean, literally, it'll go from, from a sprout to, oh my gosh, that thing's growing crazy. I am a gardener. <laughs> wow. So I think anyway. it would be a good idea for them to look for grubs, make sure they don't have gophers, something going on. Yeah, if you see mounds, I mean, the only way to really know, it'd be a root thing. Mm -hmm is to take a hand trowel and just dig beside the, the root ball it, on the stressed out side. This goes for anything, not just this, not just Alan and his right. aspen. When you see a stressed out plant, take a hand trowel, dig down in there. If you see even one little white worm, you've got dozens and that's a grub. So the larva stage of beetles are called grubs. And so when they colonize, they'll, they'll literally eat. I've seen trees blow over in the wind because the grubs ate all the roots off. It could be that. And if you have it, if you see that, come see us. There's a real easy grub killer. You sprinkle it on there, water it in, takes them all out like that. Mm -hmm. And one application lasts for a whole year. But I hate to just start sp spreading right. grub killers out there you know, for, sure. yeah. But, but it's, it's worth just, checking. It's worth checking. Mm -hmm. Look for pocket gophers. They like the taste of aspens. But that would be obvious. Alan would have said, I have gophers that killed one of my branches. He You'd didn't say that. Surprised. Some people really? just... They see something die. They, they don't really check out the surrounding area to see what's oh. going on. So Go first. Our what's going underground on. rats, they all <laughs> deserve to die. But that's coming from a southern boy. That's just what we did. So you don't want rats in the barn. You don't want them in the shed. You don't want them in the house. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Should we'll I go into my on. southern accent? No. <laughs> Let's move on to Sherry. She lives out in Chino. She's having um, issues with grasshoppers. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Um, she says in the past, she's always used Nolo bait, but she yeah. doesn't seem to be able to find it this year. Yeah. What are the other options out there for grasshoppers? Yeah. So Nolo bait, we've been selling that for decades. <clears throat> it's a great organic. It's also owned by a little family business and the business burned down. They're trying to recover, but they're a small company of a very specialized organic and so it's just it's not going to be available in, in the marketplace and you people go oh, i'm going to find it online well good luck yeah. and you better make sure you check the the the, the expiration date yeah because <laughs> if it's over like 60 days old you don't want it you're getting last year's leftover stuff that's how you found it so really what we're doing is two things there's a spray you can you can put it into a hose and sprayer just spray off those weeds the back area where the grubs where the uh, grasshoppers are Spray that and it'll become a barrier. It's called indoor outdoor insect spray. I mean, that's just that's it. It's very effective against grasshoppers, crickets, scorpions, blister beetles, but it's way safer than malathion, some of these nasty chemicals. So I would say spray that. The other one is we have a, a, a granular, it's called turf ranger. You sprinkle it out in the area where they are active. You water it in, and now as they cross that area, they pick it up. It's in the soil. It's living in the soil. They'll pick it up, and it takes out scorpions, grasshoppers, blister beetles, anything that crawls on the ground, slugs, uh, pill, pill bugs, all that kind of stuff. So um, I would say Turf Ranger, if you want the long-term solution, spread it out, water it in. If you want just, I want to watch them die and quiver before my eyes. And an indoor outdoors bug spray, basically, or come and talk to us. Sherry. Come in here and talk to us. Stop emailing and asking questions. We want to see you. <laughs> Bring a dead grasshopper with you. We'll show you how it to is, kill it. It's better to get them in the earlier stages oh, yeah. than when they get like dinosaur size. Yeah. So, so <laughs> grasshoppers are funny. They 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 have an exoskeleton, so their their shell is their skeleton. And so when they're small, they just shed that like a snake. They shed it and they have another one. They shed it. They just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And finally, it takes a shotgun or like, <laughs> like air to surface to air missiles to take them out. They're huge. And those folks out in Prescott Valley, they're so fat and chubby. They can't even fly. I mean, they're huge. I mean, I don't, you could barbecue them, feed the neighborhoods with one grasshopper. 
they're so ginormous. So there's a way to kill them. We can show you how to do that. Come see us. Definitely. That's it for this segment. Can Elisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be right back after this. Waters Garden Companion Plants in May are Vining Akebia, Purple Robe Locust, Prescott Sunshine Geraniums, and Indian Hawthorn. Wind is no problem for this Indian Hawthorn. Rose-colored flowers cover this spring bloomer that often repeat blooms in fall. Dark blue berries adorn this compact bush that takes the wind and soaks up the sun like a native. Perfect for low-maintenance gardens with virtually no pruning ever. Every backyard should have at least one and only found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to Ken Lay, a.k.a. the Top 10 Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Family Garden Center. Listen daily as he answers the top 10 questions of the week, streaming on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. 